Hey guys, Brian here with Wolf's Prairie Outdoors. Today we're bringing you our third installment in the Budget Brush Gun Build Series where we upgrade a Marlin 336W. Today we're going to be installing a new mag tube, a follower, and a rocket pod from Ranger Point Precision. If your rifle doesn't have barrel bands like this one does, you're going to want to check out the link right up here because it will take you to our 1894 CST build. And in that one, the rifle does not have these barrel bands. It has an end cap on the handguard, so it's a little bit different process for installation and removal. Uh, if you are just joining us, check the link right here, and it will take you to the beginning of the series, and you can watch everything to this point. We've upgraded the lever, quick takedown screw, trigger, trigger spring, and loading gate so far. Been some great upgrades. We're going to do this mag tube install, and after this, we're going to take it out and do some planking, see how all these upgrades are doing. After that, we'll be doing sights. We've got a safety delete yet, and... Uh, some other stuff. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going on this rifle. We're gonna have a lot of fun with it, but that's enough yapping. Let's get to installing. So first up, we're gonna have to remove the screws for this barrel band, this barrel band. We're gonna have to remove the front sight hood, the front sight, and the handguard. As always, you wanna have a good set of hollow ground screwdrivers when you're doing this. If you don't have a set, then tape up the end of your bits so that if you slip out, you have less chance of marring up your finish. Also, make sure you use the right size bit for the screws. These screws are temperamental and you can break the heads on them fairly easily. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the front sight because I know it has to come off of here. As you guys can see right here, there is a single screw retaining my front sight. So I'm gonna flip the rifle up. This bit just fits in there so that I don't have to remove the front sight hood. I'm gonna set the sight and sight hood in my parts tray. Next up, I'm gonna switch out bits and I'm going to remove barrel bands. As you can see, there is a single screw on this barrel band right here. Once it stops backing out, then you have unscrewed all the threads. And I'm going to take my brass pointer slash punch and use it to just push on the back side of that screw. Push it right out. It fell in my parts tray, but that's where it's gonna go. Next up, I am going to switch bits again. And I'm gonna remove the front barrel band. And that one is loose. I'll remove it. And if you notice, the magazine tube slid slightly forward. That's because there's pressure from the magazine spring and follower. So when you go to reinstall that front screw, you will have to put a finger on the end of the magazine tube and push it back. That way the grooves in the band and in the barrels will align properly so that your screw will go through with ease and you won't mar anything up. Okay, now that those are loose, I've just got to remove this rear band. This one is really on here, so I will probably be coaxing it along with a rubber mallet, just until it gets worked loose. Okay, there we go. Now it's loose. A very, very, very secure fit there. Very close tolerances. All right, now I will slide that off. Put that in my parts tray. And slide the other one off with the magazine tube. Be careful, this is under pressure. You've got a magazine spring in here as well. All right, that's off. So now I'll go ahead and remove that barrel band from this mag tube, put it in my parts bin. I'm gonna set this aside for now. We still have to remove that magazine tube cap. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the magazine tube spring. And I wonder if the follower will come with. No, it did not. So I'll have to pick the rifle up and remove the handguard. Just gonna put a little pressure downward on that and it should come right off. There it is. And as you guys can see, there is our magazine follower. Pull that plastic follower out and we're gonna be reinstalling the nice blue Ranger Point Precision follower. And that follower has some really nice helical grooves in it. They're gonna help clean out the magazine tube of any grit or grime that happened to build up in there. So for now, I'm gonna set the rifle aside. I'm gonna get the magazine tube as you guys can see, there is a screw in the bottom here. I'm gonna remove that screw. 
It's a simple process. It's just a single screw running through that cap, holding it in place. It's not like the non-barrel band models because that is actually where the cap is attached with a stud to the bottom of the front of the barrel. I'm going to remove that little screw. Now that I've removed this itty bitty screw that was retaining the magazine cap that I need, I will hold on to that screw, set it in my parts tray. I'm going to set my rifle back up here inverted so that I can get to the magazine tube area. Okay, now I'm going to take my new follower, slide it into the rifle where it goes. I will take my new magazine tube, slide the magazine spring inside the tube. Go ahead and get that properly aligned in the follower. Slide the new tube down over the follower. Okay, now that I've got the mag tube installed, I want to put my hand guard back on so that this doesn't flop around when I'm trying to secure the other end. So, I'm gonna slide this channel down over the end of the mag tube and bring it on down the gun. Now it will take some coaxing to get it back into this groove. So again, break out the rubber mallet and just lightly tap it till you're satisfied that it's as far as it's going to go. Now I'm going to check my holes to see how they line up and it looks like they are doing pretty good. Now for this part, I've flipped the rifle over just because the barrel and action want to separate from this lightweight tube and forend. So I'm just going to have it flipped for now till I can get this barrel band on here because I don't want it coming apart. And this is going to be a tight fit just like it was coming off. It's going to be a very snug fit going back on. So be careful, take your time, don't mar your finish up. Okay, we'll take the mallet and just lightly coax it. back into place. Little here, little there. That way you don't cant it too much in one direction or the other. Now, I'm gonna stand this up because it's easier for me to visually see through the hole and make sure that my Grooves are lined up accordingly. And now when you are lining up the groove in your magazine tube, an easy way to check and see if your grooves are lined up properly is just look up top here. If you've got this groove here where my brass punch is coming through, if that's aligned properly, the other groove should be aligned properly. It's pretty simple there. So now I'm gonna take my screw and I'm going to reinstall it through all right, now they got the barrel band slid back down and the screw pushed in. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and just screw that bad boy into place. These can be kind of tricky at times. Um, I've seen them where they're flexed or bent. Um, there's just a lot of pressure on these. I'm actually gonna lay this down so I can get a better purchase on it. I do not wanna mess this screw up. Slow and steady here, guys. These screws are very delicate. The top of that one actually just peeled. It's sad that the screws just are not the quality they used to be, unfortunately, but it's in there. And now we can finish up. All right, now that that barrel band is installed, we're gonna install the peanut and the other front barrel band and make sure the screw's facing the same direction, just looks better to have it more uniform. On this one, the threads are on the opposing end of the head, whereas on the barrel band on the wood, again the threads are on the head end. It can be a little confusing at times, but it's not that difficult. Just pay attention to what you're doing and you won't mess up, generally speaking. Get this lined up. This screw can be a bit of a bear as well. There's a lot of different angles to get everything aligned and a lot of pressure and I think at the factory they kind of make things go and it's super tight and it's harder for us to do that out here when we're not used to doing this every day. So it takes some finagling to get that lined up and get it going in. But once you do, make sure you got your proper bit and screw that bad boy down. All right, that is tight. All we like now is the rocket pod and the front sight. So 
When it comes to doing this rocket pod, it's just like any other magazine cap, be very careful when you're running the spring back in. You really don't want to lose this thing flying across the room. There's a lot of pressure here. And I'm going to get the rocket pod. Make sure you have the big hole up because the screw has to feed down into that and thread into it to hold it in place. So now I've got that going. Should have switched bits first, but I can do that now. It's not a problem. Okay. There we go. And I've got my bit going. Pull that bad boy down in place. And that is on and tight. All we got left now is front sight. Okay guys, when reinstalling this front sight, you want to be very, very careful because there's only a couple of threads holding this to the barrel. So if you mess up, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have to get things redone by a professional gunsmith and you really don't want to do that. So take your time, go easy, do not over, over torque this and make sure your screw is properly set in the threads before you start tightening it down. Go ahead and get my bit in the hole. Place that where it goes. I'm going to back thread it until I feel that catch where the thread drops into place. And then I can start tightening down. Make sure everything's aligned properly. Snug it down, but do not over torque it. You can always tighten this up again. Put some Loctite on it if you need to, but do not over torque that. You will strip those threads out and ruin it and you have to get it re-threaded. All right, rocket pod and front sight are installed. Everything else is in and tightened down and good to go. I think it's looking really good. I'm excited with the way this build's coming along. And guys, this is something you can do in your garage at home, at your desk, in the living room if you had to on the coffee table. Your wife might not, might not like it, but you can do it. Uh, it's really coming together well. And you know, like we said in the beginning, these are parts, you know, Christmas, get a lever, Father's Day or birthday, get a trigger. You know, a part here and there, you can make this rifle into something way more than it was in the beginning. It's functioning so well now. We did some shooting with it at the very beginning and got a feel for how things are in its stock configuration. And now we're gonna take it out and do some plinking now that we've got all these parts installed and see how these, uh, how these upgrades improve the handling and reliability of it with the new trigger, lever, loading gate, follower. Uh, mag tube was mainly just a weight savings. And I think this is gonna work out really well. I also wanna see you know, how I like these Buckhorn sights in a good thorough shooting session. And then we'll install the new sights and come back and tell you how we feel about those in another plinking session and see you know, what we get out of them. Because we're gonna do the uh, range of point precision clover leaf sight. And so it has a, as you see here, it has basically a crosshair built into the ghost ring sight with some fiber optics. It's going to give you a really good sight picture and I think it's going to help make a fast acquisition with those crosshairs in there. And we'll also have the pick rail option with this sight set up so that we can mount a scope if we so choose when we go deer hunting. So like I said, that's it. That's all there is to it. Really simple installations guys. If you haven't seen the other videos in the series, check out the link up here. You can go see all the videos. Really easy, something you can do at home in your spare time. Takes no time at all to do these little installations here and there. And that's about it. If you like what you see, give us a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Check back off. And we got a lot more coming. And I'll take this thing out plinking real soon. Have a good one, guys.